Hi, I recently needed to find some of my own content actually, which is not quite unusual. I needed to link to it and it turns out it was, uh, I wanted my explanation of near field versus far field EMC or electromagnetic uh, conformity in regards to EMC testing. And what is the difference between near field and far field? I was trying to explain it. And as it turns out, I've done like four, maybe five videos on various aspects of EMC testing emissions and uh, probing, near field probing and stuff like that. And it was actually buried away. I had to do some finding. It was buried away inside one of my videos. So I thought I'd just split that out and do a separate video here. It's mostly recycled content, um, but it'll be better for or people trying to find information for near field, what's the difference between near field and far field testing. And as it turns out, you, um, you've no doubt seen my previous videos. If you haven't, I'll link them in all down below. These are near field probes. These are um, H field or magnetic field probes, of various different sizes. And I've done a video on how you can manufacture your own for like 10 bucks or less. Although these are like sets of these are pretty uh, cheap these days. I might link some sets down below on uh, AliExpress. Uh, you can pick up a whole set. So, you know, you can argue it's probably not worth making your own. If you already got the rigid coax, you can do that um, and you can make one for like 10 bucks really cheap and you get a little pre-amplifier you can get those really cheap as well but anyway these are near field probes designed to uh, probe directly onto your PCB. And then you've got your electric field or E-field probe like this, and there is a huge difference between electric field and magnetic field probes. But when it comes to measuring the far field, i.e. what you get if you send your product away to an EMC test house to be uh, compliance tested versus a very, the various CISPA standards or whatever standard you're actually uh, testing against for electromagnetic uh, conformity, then they're going to test it in the far field. They don't use near field probes like these. These are only for your own like debugging and pre-compliance troubleshooting and stuff like that. Extremely handy and you should have them and you should know how to use them. But far field testing is significantly different. And I've now got ta -da, a far field probe. Yes, it's a, <laughs> a probe, a far field antenna because when your electric fields and magnetic fields combine at a certain distance, information coming shortly, you need an, a regular antenna like this. In fact, this isn't a regular antenna. This is a log periodic uh, design. This one's uh, designed for about uh, just under 300 megahertz up to one gig. And unfortunately, the uh, CISPA standards that you might generally uh, test against and uh, for compliance, for product compliance, uh, generally might be say 30 megahertz up to a one gig, for example. So you need a much bigger antenna for this. So anyway, I do plan on uh, using this in some for doing uh, some far field measurements in a future video. So watch out for that uh, eventually. So the whole idea is that you take your product and you take it to your EMC test house or an open area test site and oats and you whack this on your table, you power it up and you put your um, far field antenna a certain distance away from it at a certain orientation and you can rotate your product as well around like this to get the different axes and stuff like that. But then you can measure the electromagnetic far field emissions of your product. So anyway, there is a quite a substantial difference between near field and far field and it's very important to understand. So uh, if you are looking at like getting a like a real antenna, for example, um, for uh, far field testing, like they're quite expensive. This is like a $5,000 one, but this will go down to 20 megahertz, for example. So it'll cover that entire uh, compliance range uh, pretty much. But different products have different compliance standards and different frequency ranges you need to test over and things like that. It's actually quite uh, complex. So yeah, if you want to do it properly, of course, you've got to go to an EMC uh, test house. They will tell you exactly what uh, standards that your particular product is applicable for and they'll test against those particular standards. But yeah, if anyone knows um, where you can buy a, a, a far field EMC test antenna that goes down to say 30 megahertz, please let me know because I have been trying to find a cheap one and I cannot do it. This one is only 50 bucks and I'll link it on AliExpress down below. But as I said, it's an order of magnitude higher than what I want. It's about 300 megahertz and up. I want to go down to 30 megahertz uh, for your various uh, basic product uh, standards. But of course, the lower the frequency that goes, 
the physically bigger antenna you've got. So this is a log periodic design. For those who don't know, there's a little SMC connector um, up here and the center pin of that um, it goes to one side of this, even though the silk screen shows both, there's actually only one PCB trace there, and then it'll alternate the next PCB trace, and then this side, and then that side, and the other side uh, contain is hooked up to the ground of the antenna, so it'll be the opposite one. So the center conductor will be this one here, and then the ground will be this one down here like this. And it goes down for the different uh, wavelengths like this. So once you get down to 30 megahertz, has to be, you know, you have to start doing, uh, you know, more convoluted designs, um, something like this to get those low frequencies. You can see that uh, you, this one's got a combination of the log periodic and uh, the bow tie approach um, antenna down there. So yeah, if anyone knows where you can get one of these cheap, um, <laughs> Please let me know. So I haven't been able to find the info, but I'll link to this one. It's like 50 uh, Yankee bucks or something on AliExpress. So I haven't tried it out yet, but I plan on giving this a bell uh, to do some far field testing on uh, my new four layer inner conductor outer grounded board. So that should be interesting, but that's a future video uh, to come within the next month or two, I guess. <laughs> It won't be immediate, but I'll eventually get around to doing that. So here with is the explanation, near field versus far field. Thanks. Catch you next time. And the thing with these H-field magnetic probes, and it's not like an issue with them, in fact, it's a feature, is that uh, they are dependent upon the orientation. They work in the plane. So if you've got your coil like this, it's picking up magnetic fields that are in that flat plane there. So you'll notice that if we take this, there's our spectrum, and that, that's over 250 megahertz, and if we simply rotate that like that, it picks up different components. Look at that. So you can actually use that as a feature using a uh, smaller diameter one. You can get down there and you can trace down uh, your offending uh, components and traces better. Um, things like that. So I, I probably have to do a, com a whole separate video on this. But uh, yeah, it does make a difference, the orientation. We've seen quite a significant difference here between the four layer and the two layer board. Makes a heck of a difference, like typically like broadband noise in this particular case, about you know 15 uh, dB or so, and that's a lot. But does that translate, if you measure say a 15 dB difference here, does it actually, with your near field probes, does that actually translate to a 15 dB difference on your uh, EMC testing when you put it through the test house and you test it against the compliance standard? Well, the answer is unfortunately not. Um, these near field probes, both the H field um, magnetic field and the electric E field uh, probes, all this is, as I said, the near field. And whereas all of the compliance testing is done in the far field. And I'll explain that in a minute because I have a Dave CAD. So what's the point of using uh, these near field probes if they're not sort of like quantitatively uh, equivalent to what they do in the test house? Well, the good thing about it is that at the design stage or maybe if you fail compliance or something or you need to, or you're doing some pre-compliance testing, you can go around your board um, and sniff uh, all around your board uh, with the H field and the E field probe to see if uh, there's any issues, see if there, you know, anything's radiating wildly and stuff like that. You can, you might be able to see a big uh, spike or something at one particular frequency. You might go, oh, we need to knock that down, even though you don't, even though it might be compliant <laughs> at the design stage you might go well you know I'm not going to take any chances and I'm going to knock that problem on the head now before I send it across to the test house. So we'll briefly talk about near field and far field here and uh, how it relates to the electromagnetic radiation. Now a, you might have heard the term electromagnetic radiation it's electro and magnetic contains electric and magnetic components and you can look at it this is like the standard uh, visual representation of it the electrical field might like would go up in the uh, z-axis like this and the H field is 90 degrees from that so they actually uh, propagate in different orientations and of course this is uh, the wavelength and here's a cute little animation just to 
show you how that works as it propagates down. Now, what we actually have to look at though is what's called the wave impedance. And this is where the difference between near field is everything on this side and far field is everything on this side. Now, the wave impedance in ohms like this, in the, for this particular scale, please excuse the crudity, didn't have time to build it to scale or to paint it, uh, from 10 ohms to 10,000 here. So this is where you have to define far field and near field. Well, the electric field and the magnetic or H field, there is a difference between H and B, by the way. Uh, B is flux density. You might sometimes be, uh, hear it called B, um, but it's actually H, magnetic field, as opposed to induced magnetic field, as opposed to magnetic flux density. Anyway, won't go into the details. So the H or magnetic field actually has a very low impedance source um, in the near field, whereas the electric or E field has a very high impedance. And I'll clarify that in a minute. But basically it all comes down to the wavelength lambda here. And uh, this is normalized to one here. Um, and it's lambda on two pi, which is basically we're, we're going to normalize to that value. And of course, let's take, for example, 100 megahertz is a uh, wavelength of three meters so pi on two that's about a half meter so when you get to a half meter away from your product this is where the electric fields and the magnetic field actually start to converge it's not really clean like this there's a bit of uh, you know overlap in here and this is like the transition there's going to be like a transition region in here where uh, the two fields eventually combine and anything over roughly half a meter away at 100 megahertz the electric and magnetic fields combine to give you a singular impedance, which actually happens to be 377 ohms in free air. So anything over the wavelength on 2 pi is to, uh, deemed to be the far field, and anything closer, physically closer than that, like we just did with our probes here, is the near field. Now this is why we have two different types of probes. One is the H field probe, the magnetic probe, the other is the E field or electric field probe. And the magnetic or H field is going to be generated by higher currents, i.e. Uh, sources that have a very a lower impedance. So for example, if you've got a lot of current flowing in a, in a particular uh, trace, either due to an actual like heavy current switching or even very fast switching that's dumping a lot of energy into the bypass capacitors and the capacitance between the power planes and everything else, then that's generating, typically be generating a magnetic field due to the low impedance and the high current. But very high impedance things that uh, don't generate lots of current, then they generate electric fields and uh, hence the bigger source impedance. So you'll generate electric fields from say, a, just like a static power supply, for example, your five volt power supply. Whereas all your switching stuff will dominate down in the H field here because there's lots of uh, current being dumped into the trace or the load capacitance or the uh, particular load itself when you're switching things. So that's why you need to use these two different probes. And the magnetic field probes, they are sensitive to orientation like this and like that as well as I talked about on the plane. Whereas the electric field is not sensitive. You can just put that in any orientation and it's not going to make a difference. So if I use my E field probe like this and let's say I probe this power trace over here like this, you can see it's really not going to make any difference the orientation that I put that in. It's just completely insensitive to that because there's no magnetic field coupling. It's electric field coupling and it's just purely the distance. But if you take a magnetic loop probe like this and I just change the orientation like that, wow, that makes a big difference. It really brings out the peaks if I put it vertically like that. If I put it horizontal, it gets more of the current flowing through the trace. And if we use our smallest H field probe, let's just have a look at, let's say uh, this uh, like blank area over here. This is our four layer board like this, or maybe right over on the edge of the corner of the board, right over here like this. And let's compare that with our two layer board here. Bingo, look at that. Because we've actually got a power trace actually running right around uh, this corner as well, which we actually physically removed. And you can actually see that uh, the power trace actually running all the way around there 
like that. So that's just going to radiate like buggery. But even if we go over just the ground plane there, you can see it's much, much higher than we get with the uh, four layer board. And this is why at the uh, EMC test house, they'll test in the far field here because it binds the electric and magnetic uh, fields together. And uh, basically the typical testing distances would be like one meter, three meters, five meters, 10 meters, for example, away. It depends on the type of product they're testing and to which uh, standard they're actually testing to. But say if you put it uh, 10 meters away, then you can have a larger rotating turntable so that your product rotates around like this on the turntable and they can measure all the axes like this when they while they have their super expensive you know biconical um super calibrated measurement antenna 10 meters away uh measuring over say 30 megahertz to 10 gigahertz uh far field for example might be a typical uh measurement range and then there'll be uh standard like uh envelopes that you have to get under and also peaks and things like that and it gets you know the standard gets uh, quite complicated but uh, yeah just the uh, near field uh, testing that we do here doesn't really translate to the far field but you can certainly uh, get an indication of whether or not you've got any nasties on your board. Yeah.